Hey folks, so this is a follow-on video to what I just did before, which is a Bode plot um, with three first-order transfer functions back to back to back. So I've got G1, G2, G3 that are just the same. It's just sigma over one plus sigma, and I gave it a cutoff frequency of 10. And so if I come down here and I plot my Bode, um, here is my third order Bode plot, and so I've got a DC gain of zero, of one, sorry. Um, that's 10 to the zero, which is one. When I hit my cutoff frequency at 10, I'm at, I will be, I would be at minus 60, at minus 9 dB, but I'm at, what, 0.33. Um, so 0.33 must be uh, minus 9 dB. I'll verify in a second. And then my phase will be minus 135. And then as I roll down here, I'm rolling down at minus 60 dB per decade because it's a third order transfer function. If I look at where my graph crosses minus 180, it crosses about here, which looks like, what, 17.26 radians per second. If I come up here to, let's zoom in so we can get a, a, a better assessment. So if I find... 17.26, that's about here. And it looks like my magnitude is 0 0.12. And so my instability is where that graph crosses one. So I need to figure out how much I can multiply my plot to get to one. So if I just do um, 1 divided by 0 0.12, it looks like a gain of about 8.33 is going to cause my system to go stable. Now, I don't need to do the guessing game. I can do seedle.margin and, and run that and print it. And it's going to print three, uh, four numbers here. And if you go to the Google and you look up control.margin, it's going to tell you the gain margin, the phase margin, the frequency at the gain margin, and the frequency, sorry, the frequency of the gain margin and the frequency at the phase margin. And so that first number is gain margin. So we got 8.33 just by looking at the graph. They got 7.999. The phase margin is infinite. And I said that before that it was infinite because, again, you're looking at where the graph crosses zero, which it, or one, which it does. But then, but you're also looking at, um, this is sort of, it, it's getting a NAND because it didn't go all the way out to zero. Uh, Bode plots are kind of weird. If I went all the way out, I mean, it, technically my phase margin would be 180, um, but it's not, right? So this is saying that if I make my gain eight, I'm gonna go unstable. So what I can do to sort of check that is I can um, make a uh, kind of a poor man's root locus and I wanted to do it this way because I wanted to see some things. And so I'm doing a for loop on K where I vary K from 0 0.1 to 10. And I chose 10 because that's just over eight. And then I'm look, I'm grabbing the poles of my closed loop transfer function, which is K open loop over one plus K open loop. And then I'm plotting the real and imaginary component. And I'm gonna put a, uh, a grid there. And so I should get two plots. And so here we go. So here are my open loop poles at zero. I've got three asymptotes. And right here, you can see my system shoots over to the right half plane. And so if I, uh, if I do like a special case where I say, let's let k equal 8.0, and then I'm gonna copy and paste these lines of code, except instead of blue stars, I'm gonna plot a red star. I should see a red star right there at, um, uh, right at the imaginary axis. And so this is saying again that I can increase my Bode plot by eight before my system goes unstable. So let's simulate this too now just to like really drive this home. So I'm gonna say uh, closed loop is K times GCL, or G open loop over one plus K times GCL. And then I'm just gonna do the, uh, uh, let's see, Y out is Cetl.step response. I'm gonna hit it with a step of G closed loop. And I, I think if I don't give it the T out window, nah, that's fine. 
So T out is NP dot lim space. Let's just do five. So, oh, so sigma is 10, so the natural frequency is 10. So if I just do for a second, I should get plenty of oscillations. Um, and PLT dot plot, T out, Y out. I need a figure, PLT dot figure. So let's make K five. So I should still be stable here in valid syntax. GCL is not defined. Oh, of course, right here. You have to have the same shapes. Uh, what's y out? np dot shape y out. It's two by. Oh, it's because I forgot. I didn't give a t out. Okay. Uh, np dot shape y out. It's two rows. Is that because I have to do this and unpack it? Oh, and of course it's backwards. So this is T out, Y out, and then PLT dot grid. I like it. Okay, initial conditions are zero. System is stable. Um, why did it? Why do I have steady state error? Why do I have? It's, it's sigma cubed over. Oh, but I hit the system with a step and it's a type zero system. So I have, I have steady state error. Okay. How do you do the final value theorem? Don't you just plug in S equals zero? Oh, but that's open loop. Okay, so when you close the loop, that's right. Okay, yeah, so I have a, I have a type zero system I'm hitting with the step so I get steady state error. Okay, so if you um, increase your gain to 7.9 to try and remove some of that steady state error. You are definitely going to remove your steady state error, but you're also borderline going unstable. If we simulate this out to 10 seconds, now we're at a situation where our poles are really, really close and we're barely stable. If we go to 8.1, we are going to be just over this and we are now unstable okay so now what happens if you come in here and rather than open loop being g1 times g2 times g3 you come in here and throw a 5 in there okay now before I simulate this and don't look at these numbers down here let's take a look at this Bode plot it almost looks the same but don't let that fool you if you look at the DC gain here it's not 1 anymore it is five because I've shifted up the plot by five. If you look at where this crosses minus 180 though, it's the same, it's still 17.23. But if you come up here now, let's zoom in. 17.23 is about here. Now look at my Y axis, it's 0.6. So if I do 0.1 divided by 0.6, what's 1 divided by 0.6? Apparently, is it, wait, did I do this right? 17 point, yeah, 1 divided by 0.6 apparently is 1.6. What, what this is telling me is that at 17.3 radians per second, I've got a gain margin of 1.6. So if my gain is 1.6 or higher, I'm unstable. So that means in this case, yep, I'm, I, choose, I chose a gain of eight. I'm way over stable at that point. And so if I look at my instability, yeah, I blew up. So now that we have our new gain margin, let's go back here and let's choose something smaller. 1.6 is my limit. And by the way, let's do one divided by 0 0.6. So yeah, we got 1.6. We got pretty close just by looking at the graph. If we make K, what do we wanna make K? 1.4 now, right? And we hit this guy. Now we are stable, barely. And there you go, we've attenuated, okay? Now let's look at this phase margin thing here, okay? Let's not look at those numbers. Let's see if we can grab it ourselves, okay? So where does this cross one? Well, it crosses one about here, okay? And so that is at a frequency of 13.5. And the phase at that 13.5 
is 165. So that means we have a phase margin of, what, 15? So this is telling me that my frequency at my phase margin is 13.8, so I was pretty close. And it looks like our phase margin is 17.3, and I said 15. So this means we can handle 17 degrees of lag. Now, think about it this way. What would create some lag? Well, a first order transfer function would create some lag, right? And how much lag does a first order system create? Well, at zero, at the, deep, the phase angle at zero frequency is zero, right? But at infinity, it's minus 90. So if I threw in a G4, if I made G4 equal one, everything would be fine. My system would still be stable, right? But now let's throw in a transfer function that introduces minus 90 degrees of phase. So what would minus 90 degrees of phase be? I want a cutoff frequency that's super, super low, right? So I want my cutoff frequency to be like 0.1, and that's gonna be WC over one, uh, one WC. So my DC gain should stay the same. Let's check. So this should still be five, if I did it right. Yeah, and it, it looks like I, yeah, okay, that's 10 to the minus, yeah, if you, if you went off to infinity. But where does it cross zero now? Crosses one here. Is that one? It's 0.8. Oh, okay, it's just very sensitive. That's one. And down here, it's at minus 90. Okay, so it didn't, it did not. Okay, so that's the thing. A first order system, not only is it going to decrease the phase, the phase went down to minus 360. The problem is, is that it, it also affects the gain. So I need something that like only affects the phase angle but does not affect the gain and I, I'm not sure what kind of system you would need like a discrete discrete phase lag here this is kind of interesting though so let's take a look at this so where does this cross minus 180 minus 180 is down what here at six and we have a phase margin of we actually have a lot that actually helped us out a ton didn't it what's our phase margin now our phase margin now is 18.2 Adding that transfer function was amazing because now we're still stable. Look at that. Okay, so what happens if we made a system that was super, super slow? Now that'd be super fast, right? The other one was super slow. This, you wouldn't even notice this. Yeah, our gain margin would go back. You wouldn't even notice. Yeah, you would just get this pull out here that was so that was so fast you wouldn't even notice it. Yeah, our system still responds like it did before. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, ho hopefully that helped. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, B Bodhi plots is uh, is kind of a weird art, and uh, it kind of just takes some practice just getting in there and doing a couple plots here and taking a look at it. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and hopefully this helped. Bye. Oh, how do I do this?